Welcome to St. Francis. Please silence out of respect all of your cell phones. And please stand and join in singing our gathering song of worship found in your gather books, number 687, The Summons. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. We begin this funeral liturgy for Ron Campbell, as we begin all funeral liturgies, with a reminder of baptism. We'll sprinkle his remains with holy water. Baptism is the entryway into the Christian life. It's the promise of Christ that those who are baptized in water and the Spirit may have eternal life. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant, Ron, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Be seated now for our first reading. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, and there is a time for every event under heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn 
and a time to dance. A time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to shun embracing. A time to search and a time to give up as lost. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear apart and a time to sew together. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What profit is there to the worker from that in which he toils? I have seen in the task which God has given the sons of men with which to occupy themselves. He has made everything appropriate in its time. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. For I am already being poured out as drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. And Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First, my condolences to Paul and Jamie and members of the family. Some of the members of Ron's family couldn't be here today, so we're live streaming this so they can be here at least by social media. We're reminded in that first reading that there is a time for all things, a time for planting and a time for harvesting, a time for weeping and a time for laughter, a time to build, a time to tear down, a time for war, and even a time for peace, a time to give birth and a time to die. This reading from Ecclesiastes is not meant to tell us that there is just this shifting pendulum from side to side and that we're just part of that. And it isn't to tell us that life is just sort of a roller coaster of ups and downs. It does remind us that life is filled with many events and they are not in our control near as much as we might like to think that they are. These things and their allotted time are, however, in the mind of God, and they're in his control. Ecclesiastes says, God has made everything appropriate to its time. There's a time to be with family and friends, and there's a time to say goodbye. Our faith and our hope, our trust during this long goodbye that we call death, is that God will, will fulfill his promises. Jesus tells his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. He tells them, trust in God and trust in me. There's a place designated for each one of us in the eternal dwelling place which God has made. And Jesus tells us that he is the way to that everlasting life of heaven. We gather this morning to recall Ronald Joseph Campbell and to pray for his swift passage to the reward of the just. Ron was born in 1946. I found out just before Mass that he has long and deep roots in this community. He's connected to the Heinz family, which is like everybody, <laughs> from way back when. And he's part of the Lost Creek Heinz group, and he attended grade school here at St. Francis School. And as an adult, he worked with Kinship, and later on with Wells Fargo. And after retirement, he was very, very active with the Pierce County Food Shelf here in Ellsworth. He's an active he was an active member of our parish here of St. Francis, and he was active in his life. He liked running and weightlifting, camping and canoeing. Paul told me that he liked to show up the uh, younger people down at Snap Fitness, because <laughs> he could do more pull-ups than some of the young guys could. Certainly, that's not the sum total of our life. You know, it, it just isn't. And you can't summarize someone's life and the entirety of it at any amount of time offered for a funeral mass. But God knows our life. God knows us. That's why St. Augustine says, God is more intimate to me than I am to myself because God is just constantly present to us when we're young and when we're old and when we're born and when we die. In those allotted times in between, God is just always present to us. And so he knows us better than we know ourselves, St. Augustine says. God then knows our life. 
and we trust in his loving kindness for all those who seek after him. I had the privilege of meeting Ron only one time. He was at Preferred Living, and uh, our new deacon, John, John Worley, told me, you got to come visit this guy, anoint him, and talk to him. It was, I found a pleasure. His body, so active once at one time, was failing, but his mind was very sharp and alert. He was a pleasure to converse with, and that's my memory of him. I'm told he was a servant to many in this community, and I believe that to be true from the bits that people have told me. And then he lived with a sense of trying to leave the world a little better than he had found it. So I very much like the selection from the letter to Timothy for this funeral mass. It's not chosen very often. So St. Paul is writing to the young Bishop Timothy, a man whom Paul had, con had baptized when Timothy converted to Christianity as a young man. So Paul writes to Timothy while Paul is imprisoned in Rome, and Paul is awaiting execution. And Paul sends this letter to Timothy to remind him of his responsibilities. He says, preach and teach in season and out, meaning when it's popular and even when it's not popular to do this. Fulfill what you know is right. We might paraphrase Paul by saying, do what you know is correct. Do the right things. Seek after justice and goodness. Work for the good of others. And try to make the world that you find a little better than when you first encountered it. Paul tells Timothy to do this with great patience. Because the world doesn't change overnight. But it takes servants among us always to make it a little better time after time. To live your life that way. That's how you do it. And that, I think, is part of what Paul is telling Timothy. Serve others a little at a time, make the world a little better, and leave here then. Leave here with the understanding that Jesus is going to be the judge of our lives. Jesus, who gave his life for us, will judge us as well. So Paul is always quick to add and that faith is the cornerstone of the Christian way of living. Faith in God and faith in his Son. These stand behind all that we do, and they will be the measure of our existence, our relationship to God and our relationship to each other in love is the standard to which we will all be held. St. Paul, by the time he writes to Timothy, is a fairly old man, and he hands on to Timothy the task of continuing to do the work. Paul writes that he knows the time for his departure has come. And he says, he has fought the good fight, and he's finished the race. He has done what he could. Jesus tells, tells his disciples, I go ahead of you to prepare a place for you. Follow me, and I will bring you to me. Our prayer is that God will see Ron's life, and like that of St. Paul, that it will be the good fight that he will have finished the well-run race, active, running, and now more active again. So our prayer is, eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and, and let perpetual light shine upon him. You please stand. We will offer our needs and petitions for Ron and for ourselves to our Heavenly Father. Our response will be, hear our prayer. In baptism, Ron received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Our brother Ron was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The family and friends of Ron seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Ron. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Be seated now as we prepare, prepare the altar. Please join in our offertory song of worship found in your gather books, number 422, Jesus Remember. Stand and pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good good of all this holy church. O Lord, as we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings for the salvation of your servant, Ron, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him as well a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ, who is Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Thank you. 
please kneel or be seated for our Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Now as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your holy people. Remember your servant, Ron, whom, we have, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of this resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And we'll pray together in the words Jesus taught his first disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you, Please extend the sign of peace to one another. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy they should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. song of worship found in your gather books number 661 the servant song
I'm lost in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in. Let us pray. Please stand. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body and blood food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Ron may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Uh, the interment will occur right after our ceremony here, right after Mass, and it'll be at St. Francis Cemetery, which is just a block and a half away. It's a lovely day if you'd like to just come over to the cemetery. And then after the graveside service, then there will be a light luncheon served in the parish hall. The parish hall, if you're not familiar with it, is just across the parking lot that you see across the street, across the parking lot, and there's a blue door to your left, and that'll be the entrance to that. Um, because we have school children there, um, if you rush right over, you're going to encounter school children eating lunch while you walk in. So uh, dawdle as you move across the parking lot. <laughs> Before we go our separate ways, we take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Ronald in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessing to which you have bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and are with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace now, we take our brother to his place of rest. Please join in our final song of worship found in your gather books, number 760. Ready? 